Jet is one of the more powerful chems you can use in the world of Fallout. It supercharges your brain in a way that it creates an altered state of consciousness, where time appears to slow, allowing you to perform more actions than normal for a limited period of time. It boosts your reaction speed as everything around you goes in slow motion. Additionally, it significantly increases jump distance and maximum firing rate for a total of 10 seconds. This substance is extremely addictive, with every subsequent use of the chem within the next 5 minutes making the effects become shorter and shorter every time. Traditionally, it used to be the most addictive form of chem in the game, going almost as high as having a 50% chance of getting addicted to it whenever you would use it in Fallout 2. As far as this game is concerned, Fallout 4, most chems have a balanced out 25% chance of having you getting addicted to them respectively, including Jet. If addicted, the game will force you to continue taking the chem, or otherwise, suffer some excruciating stat deficits. The real question is though, what is Jet? What is it made out of and where does it come from? It seems like it is very much prevalent in all the games, with many different versions of it making their way all across the United States. The real surprise is that this chem was actually made after the Great War, not before. A factoid that can be a little surprising as you can actually find a lot of these in locations that would normally only be accessible before the Great War happened. For example, you can find them sometimes inside of closed off vaults, or inside of prime highly secretive government facilities. It is very much possible that some of the developers might have put them there on accident, or simply a lot of the jet that you find could very well be simply some other type of chem that serves a very similar purpose. There have been interviews in the past where developers confessed to having put Jet in locations where they shouldn't be, so mistakes are really not out of the question on this one and it is most likely the culprit. But regardless, how do we actually know they were made after the war? Well, you see, Jet made a strong appearance in Fallout 2. I do want to mention though that Bethesda didn't make Fallout 2. They actually bought the franchise from Interplay Productions for the purposes of making Fallout 3. Which means that the contents of Fallout 2 um, are a little bit darker and have a lot more adult themes than Fallout 3, Vegas or Fallout 4 have. They make a lot more specific descriptions for their chems and showcase them in a way that would make their games very difficult to be presented to a younger audience, let's say. Now, don't get me wrong, all Fallout games are rated mature and for a good reason, but damn, these guys didn't hide anything in Fallout 2. In any case, the creator of Jet was actually a child prodigy going by the name of Myron, a child genius who worked for the Mordino family in the city of New Reno, a place built upon the remains of Reno in western Nevada. For context, New Reno is essentially what is known in the area as the capital of sin, prominently known for its casinos and the abundance of prostitutes, alcohol and drugs. The child was essentially hired for its intelligence and his expertise at creating chems. He initially started by producing hallucinogens, mostly in the form of peyote, a type of cacti that he had the ability to grow in the scorching heat desert of the apocalyptic wasteland. The problem was that profits were really low, and as the effects that Pejoti would have were extremely long-lasting, he wanted to find a type of chem that would be highly active, extremely powerful, and short-lasting so that his customers would keep on coming back every day. He tried his hand on mushrooms and the like, since it really was the only type of thing that he could grow in this type of environment, but, but even still, he was asked to try something a little harder and more addictive. The Mordino the family wanted complete and absolute control of the towns and the city, so they needed something really powerful to cement their grasp on the region. The eureka moment for Myron came as a surprise in the last place he expected. He noticed that the workers that dealt with the planting and upkeep of the cacti and mushrooms always came back intoxicated. The intoxication seemed strong and powerful. 
and he didn't understand from where it was coming from. You see, unbeknownst to Myron and really anyone else, in the pre-war days, the big meat companies had experimented with a cheap protein extract for growing food. However, they had to abandon the project since they discovered a dangerous contamination of the protein by a bacteria. The combination of this protein and the bacteria caused a form of amphetamine effect when ingested. That is, an extremely powerful euphoria and energy-giving effect. Of course, this was not the intention of the meat company, so they decided to scrap the whole thing. But instead of simply throwing the contaminated batch away, they fed it to their cows so as to not waste it. These cattle were the ancestors of the post-apocalyptic Brahmin. And this is where it gets interesting. Myron noticed that his workers were getting intoxicated by using the Brahmin poop to fertilize his plants, as apparently the poop of the Brahmin still contained low residues of this protein extract. It was perfect. He could extract this protein from the dung without killing the Brahmin in the process, and it didn't take him long enough to develop a way to refine it from the waste. Thus, it provided the Mordinos with the cheap, addictive, and fast-acting chem that they had been in search of since they had entered the trade. About a hundred slaves were killed in the testing, as Myron was trying to find the perfect refined process to make this into a chem. Most of the slaves ended up dying via heart attacks, cerebral hemorrhages, and psychotic episodes. But in the end, Myron was successful at producing Jet his own invention. Thanks to him, the Mordino family were able to build a drug empire that they always wanted. And in exchange, they gave Myron the only thing he actually cared for. He really only cared for prostitutes. He was all he ever asked for. Ironically, Myron would end up dying less than a year later in a bar, stabbed to death by a jet addict. No one would remember his name, let alone the massive enterprise that he helped create, and the chem that would become such a widespread powerhouse in the United States. So the next time you grab your inhaler and breathe in some cow shit, at least now know where it comes from. Hope you all enjoyed this video. This one was really fun to make. I would like to thank Alexander Bryson, Dylan Baker, and Alex Fitchy for supporting me on patreon.com slash MrRex at the $25 level. Also, I would like to take a moment to thank all of you for watching the video, and if you could, leave me a comment about what you want me to talk about in either Elder Scrolls or Fallout. And also, please leave me a like if you can, it helps out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.